Martin, you want to come? Yeah, just to uh, build on that, I, again, to go back, um, Ronnie has spoke and at length and indeed others have around the policy impl uh, implications of not recognising travel ethnicity. Travel ethnicity, I think, has to be the starting point. And then you build the infrastructure, the policy infrastructure around that in terms of services and how services get designed and delivered, whether that's in schools or in the health service or recruitment strategies for you know, employment in Angarsh Shikana and so forth. Uh, but it is only a starting point. It's not the panacea in itself. It's not an end in itself. It's, it's the beginning, but a very important uh, beginning. Uh, why, why are things happening the way they are to Travers. I think Ronnie's absolutely right. I think Travers lack a political voice, both within the community and outside of the community, in terms of the Dáil, uh, within the Shannon, and indeed within local authorities. Uh, and, and we have very few champions as well within uh, the institutions of state, whether that's the Dáil, the Shannon, as, and so forth. And I wouldn't, I'm not going to be as generous as, as, as Ronnie when it, when it comes to racism. The reality is, that we have politicians at local level and within the Dáil who are racist. And we've seen examples of that. And, you know, the Dáil can be a microcosm of the wider society. And we have to be honest. And we have to acknowledge that. We've seen, I won't name names, but obviously. But we've seen examples of that over the years where we've, where we've had deputies at local level blocking travel accommodation. We've had deputies come out with anti-travel racism, you know, uh, in the not-too-distant past. Uh, so. That's what we're dealing with, you know, that, that institutional racism, you know, within, within the political classes and within the political elite. And there's no getting away from that. And that's a challenge, and that is a block. So, I, you know, I, I think it's important to acknowledge that. But in terms of the ethnicity bit, apart from the practical implications, which I think are hugely important, as I said at the very beginning, I think an unequivocal recognition by the Taoiseach of the day and the Dáil and to the country of travel ethnicity, I think, would consign and put the bed once and for all, this racist notion and this racist ideology that my community are in some way dysfunctional, primitive and backward, a people who need to be civilised and normalised by the state. That's a racist ideology. And if it done nothing else, it would do that. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Senator Black. Uh, our final member's contribution, Senator Neil O'Donnell. I hope it would. I, I, I really hope uh, an announcement from the TCL would do that, because I would love to see the day uh, when that happens. And you're right, uh, Martin, that hostility permeates across all levels uh, of life, and you see it manifested in political life, you see it manifested uh, outside it. Um, I agree with an awful lot of what uh, my colleagues around uh, the table had said. And, what I was trying to understand, and like Francis, I mean, you remember this, the, this committee, so I appreciate the engagement we've had over the last uh, two sessions to learn a bit more and hear a bit more. And, and, and the key question I had uh, uh, coming into this situation was would that recognition of traveller ethnicity really make a practical, tangible uh, difference when you talk about the socio economic issues, the cultural issues, the community and the social issues that, that, that exist out there? Because I suppose on the day that's in it, I'm actually someone who believes very firmly and advocates a politics that's for social justice, that's for respecting diversity, that's for respecting and promoting uh, uh, equality. So, what I believe, the, because you have made the argument very clearly, as did your colleagues in the last session, that an announcement uh, from the Taoiseach uh, that, that legislation around uh, ethnicity would be fundamentally important. I appreciate that. Uh, the issue then of what is the delay there? What is the hold up? And I think he's answered the question yourselves earlier on. Martin, you said uh, about the subtext to the narrative being that hostility and that prejudice and that racism uh, towards uh, the travelling community. Uh, Thomas, you said it was the state that institutionalised the mindset, and that mindset still prevails. Mm -hmm. And my concern and my political objective in this issue is that if and when, and I hope we get it sooner rather than later, the Taoiseach gets up and makes that announcement and, and the ethnicity of uh, Irish travellers is recognised legislatively, that that mindset will prevail. It, it will still exist, and those eight, because that's my experience yeah. in the north with, with, with the travelling community. Yeah. There's recognition there, but all of the the, the issues that are faced by uh, travelling people in the south are exactly the same. Yeah. You know, the social, the health, the educational, the accessibility to jobs and training opportunities—they yeah. all are there. So, um, 
I, I actually uh, hope it don't sound too defeatist because I actually take a great deal of heart uh, from what you have said and what you are advocating. I think we can, uh, with the collective political will, uh, achieve that recognition. But again, the following day, we're going to have to wake up and we're going to need those champions. We're going to need you kicking our door in uh, day after day to put this uh, on uh, the agenda because you're right. We're, we're human beings and there's a whole broad range of lobby uh, issues coming at us. But this, this for me, is a very, very fundamental one. Martin, again, you touched on the year that's in it. Given the year that's in it, uh, if we have any hope of living up to the aspirations of that time, then if we can't, at the very least, respect uh, and support and help uh, our, our travelling citizens, then I think that's a blight on us, to be honest. Thank you, Senator Oda.